Polite Inquiries, day four. Peter Miller says, can we now assume that the 2010, 2011 Ashes was a glitch in the Matrix? Yeah. Well, I was doing the maths about that last night. I think we got, um, the, since 1990, so basically since England started losing every time they go to the, the Gabba, I think they got 28 50s, four hundreds out of those 28, and three of them came during that glitch in the Matrix. I mean, it, yeah, it, it, it felt like a fever dream at the time. Um, it still feels like a fever dream, frankly. All the people saying, oh, you know, if England can make 500, it's like... Yes, they put on a good partnership, and yes, the pitch is flattened out. But oh my, how are they putting on five hundred? They're not putting on five hundred anywhere at the moment. Cricket Beyond Entertainment says, "I'll be direct here. Why is England batting so terrible apart from Root? It's not like these are not good batters. What's happening here?" Well, when you say they're not good batters, I mean one of them averages above forty, and you've already pointed him out. It's not. It's not as if they came here with you know a fully functioning batting lineup and it's fallen apart. And so, oh, why would this happen in the Ashes? So they came here with a batting lineup that often falls apart and it fell apart, you know? That's not a glitch, that's a feature. Realistically, they have tried a lot of different players. I mean, we lived through the Joe Denley era, right? Um, we're back with the Dawood Milan era. We're double dipping on Dawood Milan, which was harder to say than I thought it was going to be. The pop increase says, all the talk will be about the toss, but the bigger issue for me is team selection. Surely the first test of the Ashes, you go with your best possible 11, right? The only player that they didn't pick in this particular team that they should have picked is probably Stuart Broad. Anderson, if they were worried about his fitness, is fair enough. And they wanted a spinner. Well, of all the matches to choose to not play either Anderson or Broad since the dawn of time, you choose the first test of the Gabba, which basically means that when you get to that toss, you're praying not to have to bowl first. Uh, it's just a really dumb decision. It, the whole thing is so bizarre um, that they, they have, they do all this planning, they do all this thinking, and then they get there, they pick a guy they have not prepared for this job at all, and Stuart Broad's in the, on the bench with, what, 12 wickets from three tests and an average of 24, and also, just by playing Stuart Broad in this test, it would have annoyed the career male, which is kind of the point of cricket. Knuckle Pande says, has Jimmy Anderson been teaching Ollie Robertson the reverse sweep? I mean, who does Ollie Robertson think he is, right? Okay, you, you're, you're the main bowler in this attack, well, Partly because Chris Wokes didn't quite turn up. The main bowler in this attack, you're not Jimmy Anderson, mate. Put the reverse sweep away, all right? That's for the big boys. Lee Taylor says, should we be concerned about Australia's Ashes batting depth given not a single Australian made it to double figures in the second inning? I mean, you laugh, but I, mean, I didn't think they batted particularly well until England fell apart in the middle of the, of the second innings. Um, they're a Josh Hazelwood injury away from this being a draw, I think. I don't think, I don't think the Australians are like, wow, what a great side we have. I think they're thinking, wow, we won easy. I haven't seen an awful lot in what Australia offered, apart from their awesome bowling, uh, that is terrifying. Rajesh says, not so polite, what's required to sack Silverwood? Oh, Rajesh has come in like a football fan here. Yeah. Thumbs up. I mean, Silver's, bless him, I've, I've got a lot of time for him. I, li I like him as a human being, but I mean, you know, the plans for England's test team are an absolute car crash at the moment, and God knows what on earth he contributes to the T20 team. I mean, I, I can't I can't imagine he had a huge amount to say in the in the matchups when Owen Morgan's ruling the roost over there. So. What does Chris Silverwood do, you know? If you don't have a top three who can score runs, how can you, it doesn't matter how many all-rounders you have and the quality of your best bowlers and with, even whether you pick them. When it comes down to it, you won't make consistent runs and you won't win consistent test matches. I don't know if that's a coach um, problem, even if a lot of what Miller said maybe has some merit, although it's very rare that it does. Paul Frame says, West Indies lost one series in Australia, 5-0 in 2000, 2001, and Cricket Australia reduced the length of West Indies test tours to three matches. England have lost 15 of the last 16 tests in Australia. It's 10 out of the last 11, isn't it? When will Cricket Australia cut the ashes to a three test series? When it stops making them an absolute buttload of money. Jason says, will Joe Root be able to rally England before Adelaide? I'll leave this one for you, Miller. Rallying really isn't Root's modus operandi. He might score some big runs though, and then, then, then you never know what might happen. Once you're one nil down in Australia, it's unlikely you win unless something special happens like what happened with India in the last series. Generally, Australia get on top and they chug away. So, you know, get used to uh, Cameron Green and Travis Head and Alex Carey's double centuries over the next couple of tests. Now. 